What is going on everyone? Jason the Train Freak here. And today's video I'm going to show you how I built and painted all of these Walders lumber loads and make them look as realistic as possible. Also I have a mail call from a good friend, Lynn McCurdy, who said he has sent me some stuff that possibly could go in the lumber mill. So we'll have to check that out. So if you're interested in seeing how I built these lumber loads under the wood pavilion, then stay tuned. All right, so what we have today is the Walder Scene Master lumber loads. I have purchased three of these kits. And so we're just gonna start off by opening the kit and pulling out all of the information, including the instructions. So here we have the instructions and it comes with two different sprues. The instructions uh, show basically the four different types of lumbers and the needed pieces to build those. This was one of the very easiest um, builds that I have done uh, from a Walder's kit. So as the uh, camera focuses, you can see that there are two different sides of the ends of the boards. That is going to be for the 2x4s, and that one is going to be for the 4x4s. After we open our package, we want to grab our sprue cutters and go ahead and start cutting out the individual pieces that we will need. There will be one top, one bottom, two short sides and two long sides. You'll have to make sure that your top and the four sides do match to the coordinating lumber that you're trying to build, whether it's a two by four or a four by four. I'll be starting off by building one of the four by four by 16s. Now I am grabbing my file and I'm gonna file the little nubs that were cut when I used these sprue cutters to cut them off the sprue. Filing down is a very important step as this will give you uh, less gaps uh, when you do glue your pieces together. It just makes it look a little more smoother and a little more realistic. Just try not to file too much, um, but if you do, Make sure that you have some type of modeler's putty on hand so that way you, you can use it to fill in um, because there will be gaps um, from where you did file too much. Now we're going to go ahead and we're going to glue these together. I will be using Model Master's liquid cement, um, but you can also use other liquid cement from like maybe Plastruct or, you know, another company of your choice. But I just apply just a dab of liquid cement on the corners. One end of the sides will have a single nub where the other end will actually have what looks like a gap between. And we doesn't necessarily at this point have to be an exact 90 degree angle because when you put your tops and your bottoms on, that's going to go ahead and square your pieces right up. But it does make it to where you can't really mess this up per se. Uh, because the top piece has a slight angle um, for the top to go on and then your bottom actually kind of glues in flat and it kind of insets. So here I'm just starting off with gluing all of the four sides on first. It doesn't matter if you do a long and two shorts like I did here. Or if you do a short with two longs, I've actually did it both ways and you basically get the exact same results uh, from both. But I kind of like having a fast setting liquid cement in this case. Um, so that way you're just not having to hold it as long and you can see I'm not needing a jig. All right, so now I'm fixing to put the bottom piece in and you have to make sure that you put the little runners uh, facing upwards or facing out of the lumber load. So I'm just basically applying just a little bit of liquid cement on all four sides. And there is like a, a plastic or 
I mean, it's a guide, in other words, so that way when you set that in there, you're not going to be able to set it too deep. It's going to make it to where it's actually pretty flush. So the little runners are actually supposed to be extended from the lumber load in itself, and that would be so that way pallets or forklifts could get up underneath with the pallet uh, forks. All right, and so now what we're going to do is we're gluing the top and like I said, it's at an angle. And I did do the top before the bottom once. I prefer gluing the bottom before gluing the top. All right, so that is one kit down and I'll have two more to build. But each of these kits contain two sets of each, two by four by tens and four by four by tens and three sets each of two by four by sixteens and four by four by sixteens. All right, now we get to the fun part. I'm gonna make a paint mixture with Tamiya's Buff and Mission Models Farm Tractor Yellow. This is going to be a 50-50 mixture. And so I like to use just like a small little cough syrup measuring cup on this it just makes uh, small washes and small paint mixtures really easy but I'm basically putting in 30 drops of each color which then I will mix with uh, a toothpick and so I know that's not really kind of conventional but you can mix it with a paintbrush if you wanted to um, but the reason why I did 30 drops is just to make sure that I had enough paint now to paint these you can use either uh, you know brush which I'm doing by hand or you can use an airbrush but what I ended up doing was I took some blue painters tape and just kind of folded it over itself so that way I could stick the bottom of these lumber loads uh, to the uh, painters tape so that way as I'm trying to paint it one I'm not getting the paint on myself and two I don't have to worry about my lumber loads uh, moving on me but here I'm just you know going over it you know each side and just you know painting the tops and the sides um, the bottoms doesn't necessarily have to be painted you can do it if you want to it's completely optional um, I would definitely try to make sure that the um, you know the pieces that the lumber loads do sit on those little runner boards uh, that those get painted uh, at least on the ends you can see the painted lumber load above the non-painted lumber load. Also, I went ahead and glued a couple of stacks together, but I could not go no higher than two as my forklift did not go any higher. Now we're going to do something that's going to start bringing the detail in these boards, and that's going to be doing a pen wash. And what I used here was Bombay India ink. It's uh, The color is Sapia which is kind of like a, it's not black, it's like a really dark brown. Um, but I did one part of that and then along with uh, three parts of uh, water and three parts of IPA at 91%, or also isopropyl alcohol. And so what we're wanting to use this pin wash for is not necessarily to cover the whole lumber load. We want these to cover the cracks uh, in between the boards so you want either like a really fine brush I mean this is a wash so we want this really really runny um, but you can use either a fine brush or you know a small flat brush either or and just kind of do your best to go over the cracks with some of these you're going to get on top and there's no worry about it um, because the next step is going to clean that mess up so i actually ended up doing part of this on a live stream so i will link a link to that up in the upper right corner it was actually two different live streams because this is a project that i have been working on for a while
Now we're going to do some gentle sanding. So I'm using a sanding block uh, on a piece of paper. It's the same pa paper plate that I used uh, when we did the pen wash. But I'm just basically gently um, sanding each of the sides so that way we can get the, um, the, the black residue from the pen wash off the top of the boards off. And you can see how much of a difference that makes. Now you may be asking, well, why did you paint the boards that mixture of the buff and farm tractor yellow if you're just going to sand that paint off? What it's also doing is kind of giving us a dry brush look and effect on it as long as you don't sand too much off. So you get the black and the cracks, but you've also get that mixture of the yellow that came with the kit and a little bit of a more brighter yellow out of that paint mixture uh, on there and so it kind of gives it a really really neat effect but here you can see that I'm just kind of going back and forth I do a few passes over the block I inspect it to see where I'm at with things now doesn't that bottom load look a whole lot better than that top one so that is what sanding does even though I did hit the corners a little hard now that our lumber loads are painted, I'm going to use Aileen's Tacky Glue. And we're going to apply some glue just on the bottom of the runners. And we're going to go ahead and start gluing these onto the layout. Now I have moved the lumber pavilion out of the way because it was not glued in. But you can kind of see the marks where it was sitting when I applied the dirt um, ground cover. Um, a few live streams ago so the way I'm doing the design for my lumber shed is I want my 2x4s on one side my 4x4s on the other side I want the 10 foot boards up towards the front I want the 16 foot boards towards the back and so with me having three kits um, basically I've got um, four double stacks of the two by fours that are 16 feet and four by fours that are 16 feet as well and as far as the 10 foot boards i have three of each of those stacks now i do have one single uh 16 foot that's two by four and a four by four single as well that i am not going to put in there because i'm already limited on space now that I got all the lumber loads glued onto the layout, I'm going to take that Aileen's Tacky Glue and I'm going to glue under the two concrete sections of the pavilion and go ahead and get that glued in. And what I'm going to do then is take some jars of paint um, that's going to be heavy enough and that's going to help hold that pavilion down without disturbing the lumber loads and some of the other scenery materials. Alright guys, so before I open up this box from Lynn McCurdy, Junior made this for me and so I'm going to share it with you. So make sure you thumb up, that's, that's a thumb up, so like this video, that will help a whole lot. If you're new to the channel, make sure you subscribe, fill in the bell so that way as I come out with new videos, you will be notified. And if you want even more content than what you're seeing, Feel free to check out my memberships. Um, I do give away quite a few extras in there. So if that is something you're interested in, no purchase necessary. So feel free to check it out if you want to. Let's see what did Lynn send me. All right. He says that it could help the lumber mill. And that was a post that I put in there for my channel members. So let's see what he has put in here. All right, we got bubble wrap. So unfortunately, Sparky, no peanuts. Okay. First thing we have up. Ooh, loading dock and details. Oh, that's pretty cool. Comes with another forklift. So that definitely fits the era. I'm sure I can use that somewhere. All right, we got a whole bunch of old drums. It's 
So definitely can use that somewhere else in the layout, I know for fact. Oh, this is pretty heavy. Oh, sweet. Pretty cool fire truck. Truck number 12. So that definitely fits. Oh, it's pretty neat. It's got a little spare tire on the bottom. So that's really cool, Lynn. I definitely dig the fire truck. Yo, this, this box is pretty loaded. Looks like some metal pieces. That looks like some type of wood docking, but we'll get we'll get to more in that. Alright. Uh, timber loads. So there's some more loads that we can put in there possibly. I don't know what what size wood these are, but these are definitely timber loads. He gave me three sets of them. One, one two, three. Oh, some more Woodland Scenics. Okay, this is a for a rural sawmill, so that's pretty cool. So we could probably add that maybe over towards the, uh, the mill pond and just have it kind of sitting over there. More skids or pallets. Oh, this looks like a building foundation. And that could be part of what this is. That's kind of like steps. Oh, I think it all came out of this right here. It's a building. Yeah, that's where it came out of. So Woodland Scenics, this is like old school. It's a, a pharmacy kit. So that's going to be pretty cool to put together. So there's quite a few loose pieces in here, but uh, I know that's what this goes to. So Lynn, I'm pretty sure we can utilize some of this stuff over in the sawmill. So I greatly appreciate your gift um, in helping me progress on the layout. I'm gonna go ahead and put everything back in so I don't lose it. But definitely the fire truck, that's pretty cool. You know, if you got a sawmill, you definitely need a fire truck in the area. That is for sure. All right, well, that's going to wrap up the video. I hope you enjoyed what you watched um, as far as me showing you how I built the lumber loads and, you know, what Lynn McCurdy uh, sent me as well. Um, I just want to say thank you to all of my channel members and Patreon supporters out there. Uh, your contribution does go a long way and it does help keep the channel moving forward and hopefully when we get closer to 2,000 subscribers we'll throw a contest up there and see about maybe giving away some neat prizes so other than that I am going to go ahead and sign off y'all have a great week y'all be safe out there and I wish y'all all a happy railroading